Hi. Good morning, bonjour. My name is uh, Lat Shapira, and uh, the talk that you're in is uh, Shall we play a game? Lessons learned while playing Core Wars 8086. I work for AVG as a mobile security researcher, so usually I deal with uh, APKs, uh, DEX, and SO files. And reversing is my jam, so this is why I'm very excited uh, to be here. It's um, um, for the first time I'm here in uh, Recon in Canada. And uh, I used to check and view the materials for years, so it's uh, more than I could imagine for myself being here in front of you right now. So I am one of the organizers of uh, Coros 8086 competition that is held in Israel. Um, Coros 8086, it's like the digital uh, version of Fight Club. And the idea is be behind the competition is that you write assembly programs in assembly 8086 that fight each other over a digital arena, digital memory. The, those programs fight each other, okay? So that was the best idea I could come with uh, right now to wake you up after the, you tested your uh, drinking abilities uh, last night. Uh, so there's a popular TV show named Beauty and the Geek. Everybody is familiar with it? You should. <laughs> and, uh, so in Israel, not a lot of beautiful girls know assembly and participate in the competition. And uh, we have only geeks. So <laughs> the unofficial name of this competition uh, is the Israeli Idol of the Geeks. So it is uh, sponsored by uh, military, IDF, Israel Defense Force, Unit uh, 8200, uh, which is uh, considered, to, considered to be a cyber-related unit, and the uh, Israeli Security Agency, uh, academic institutes such, uh, such as the uh, IDC Herzliya and the uh, companies, IT companies like IBM and the uh, others. So. Uh, to, we try to encourage girls to participate, so if you know assembly and your beauty, please don't hesitate to contact me later after the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, why Core Wars 8086? So, the problem today is that is most teens or uh, new generation are not interested in assembly and reversing, okay? And we try to uh, push them. So, the solution is to learning assembly while having fun. So, Let's say you're a student and you're given an assignment in, the, in your university to write a calculator in assembly, which is boring, right? You know, if uh, something happened, then move, something like that. So it's more sexy to write assembly programs with each other, okay? <laughs> so um, this competition has everything. Um, it has challenges, it has rapid programming, it has teamwork, it has uh, a lot of uh, things uh, like math and readers. And it's also attention to detail, so it contains a lot of uh, things we want to encourage. And uh, we want the competition to be their kickstart. So I thought to myself, hey, why don't I go to Recon and ask uh, 300 uh, ninjas and reversers for their help? Because you are experienced and you know a lot about the reversing, probably about the level. And you might be able to share ideas and uh, bring ideas, new ideas to the picture uh, from your experience so we can make this competition even more complex, techy, and fun, okay? So my ambition is to bring it to every high school around the world, okay? It will be like a cyber hacking reversal class in every high school, and we'll have a league and a global competition. And this will be like a door to offer to into our community. So uh, Hugo will have problems. He will have to do a lot of uh, reversing conferences around the world <laughs> instead of everyone. So here's a little bit what is the agenda for the next uh, half hour. So hangovers later, um, we'll cover the rules and the basic uh, rules. Um, how is, what is the arena looks like, uh, simple uh, survivors, and then move on a little bit uh, deeper. So the origin of the game is uh, a paper was published in 1984 uh, that uh, described how two programs uh, fight each other in a digital computer. It uh, was described how it was written in an assembly language called Red Code, which is abstract, abstract uh, assembly language, which is proprietary. It's not used outside the game. So it's a little bit useless to learn uh, Red Code because it's not can be used in uh, reversing in real life. It work. So people don't use it outside the game. So it's better to use Core 8086, where you can practice and have like a, two uh, things in one, okay? <laughs> So let's see how uh, one battle looks, looks like in action. On the right, you can uh, see the uh, survivors in the current battle. Each survivor has its own color. Um, and this is like how they fight each other and try to erase the memory of the other uh, uh, programs. Anyone can say or tell 
what usually, uh, what is the question that is raised by one of the teams at West Point, usually? Why am I Mr. Pink? <laughs> okay, <laughs> not a lot of uh, teams want to get the pink color, so. You can also see the firing sequence. Uh, by the way, it's spread its color because you can watch how the programs color the, the arena, so you can able to watch how is the sequence rate of the attack, how many bytes do they uh, put inside the arena, okay? So let's uh, see, get a feeling, so how uh, the timeline of the competition looks like and when reversing is part of the competition. So we're getting zombies from the organizer. Zombies are survivors that do not get points and try to make the game a little bit more complex, more uh, fun. Um, so we have time to reverse them right now. And later was the first round. The first one decreased 25% of the overall uh, score. So a few days later, there was the second round, there was a bit enough of version. And all the teams are met in one place and uh, compete face to face, okay? So the last version you submit before nine o'clock is uh, participate in the second round. And then you have three hours of reversing and the other survivors of the other teams, you get all the reversions and rewriting your own survivors, okay? There's another round after three hours, and which is equals to 50%, and uh, there's like a calculation who are the top four survivors get to the final round, then there is a final, and then there is a, there are winners. So uh, me and the young uh, boy uh, won the last competition held, okay? So the engine is written in Java and is available, uh, soft code is available in the Google code. You can download and zip and play very easily. All the source codes can be found and be reviewed. And there's a folder named survivors where you put the survivors you want to run in the current uh, battle and also the zombies that you want to run the current battle. Um, it's written in assembly 86, 16-bit, uh, but there are still few not major instructions that are not supported by the engine, okay? The file type of a survivor is a com file, the DOS uh, command uh, file format, and there's a limitation. You can only write survivor till uh, 512 bytes, okay? Um, and as I mentioned, each team can submit two survivors, okay? As a team, you can submit two different survivors with uh, names one and two, okay? So the survivors are loaded randomly into the arena, and um, it is assured that there is a distance between the survivors of uh, 1024, between the survivors and also to the sides of the arena, okay? And all the cells are initialized with CC opcode, which is like a killing opcode. If you get a next command and there is a CC, you get killed. And the battle ends after 2,000 rounds, or if there is one survivor left in the arena. So each survivor on its turn run uh, one uh, instruction, and the order is decided uh, when the battle begins, and not changed till the end of the battle. So one instruction, one instruction, like in a loop uh, between the uh, teams. So this is how a fight looks like in a non-digital arena. And this is how the arena looks like. Uh, the other sets are ranged from uh, four zeros uh, and to four FF, FF, four F. <laughs> and the outcome of, uh, outcome of the instructions uh, on the right is a smiling face, okay? So you paint a pixel when you move data into a cell, okay? Just move a data and then the, it's painted in the arena. Okay, so this is how the uh, registers look before uh, the first uh, round. This survivor has its, its own set of registers, like in 8086, and this is how they're initialized. One interesting register is ES, that can be used by both survivors from the same team to exchange uh, data. It's like the shared memory. So I have, I have two survivors in the same team, and they can replace data between each other. So it's like a channel, a private channel. Other teams cannot touch it, okay? Um, this is how survival gets killed. There are three options. Survival gets killed when it's run illegal command, when it runs an instruction that is not supported by the agents, because I mentioned there are few uh, instructions that are not uh, supported. And if it tries to access an invalid memory address, okay? This is, uh, most of the time, survivors do get killed because of the mismatch in the addresses or mismatch calculation. Zombies are survivors are sent by the organizers, but they don't get points, I mentioned it. And when you get control over a zombie, there is the C different CPU states problem. What do you mean that when you control a zombie, you can pawn a zombie, you can try to hack it and be the owner of that zombie, of the program, but you cannot count 
which uh, registers what are status. For example, the direction flag. If you pawn a zombie and you might uh, think the direction flag is opposite side, you can might erase your own master because you can't it will uh, write that in that direction, but it writes in the other direction. Um, you also need to make them suicide before the battle ends because uh, when the uh, battle ends, all the teams that are left in the arena, the points are split between them. So zombies get points, they're not inc included in the total, but he, our team will not get a lot of points if we don't make them suicide before the battle ends. So usually the zombies contain the math riddle that you need to solve or understand the logic so to be able to uh, pawn the zombies, okay? To get control over it. So the engine is written in Java and is available in uh, Google Code, okay? So we can review it and uh, we can take advantage if we find bugs in the, en in the engine, okay? It is legal because all the teams are able to do that. There's the same chance for every team to review the code and uh, find the vulnerabilities in the engine. It can be used. So as I told earlier, the order is supposed to be randomly, but here's an example where we uh, cannot take everything as granted. So as you can see, the, uh, the survivors are sorted by name. So we run in the sorted order, and later the zombies are run. So first the survivors, later the zombies. And what is the advantage? How can you benefit from it? Anyone can tell? Who said something? Yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm right first, then the other survivors, and then the zombies. What can I benefit if I run first and then the other? So Okay, but here is a, a, how we can uh, uh, abuse it. If we are a name of survivors, for example, zero in the beginning, then we run first. So let's say we have the, we have the team to run first, and later the other uh, teams, and let's assume the other teams hit our code. So our code is damage, and then damage, then the zombies turn, and we control the zombies. So we can say the zombies to fix our code. And then, when it's our turn to run again, we have a fixed code that is able to run uh, from the beginning. Because there are uh, usually five to six zombies, each zombie can fix different parts. So uh, we can uh, like separate the fixing between all of them, okay? Um, and to stay on the safe side, if somebody named his uh, other team name is uh, survival zero, you need to put a lot of zeros, okay? <laughs> to stay first. So safe cracking. Safe cells like uh, assembly readers that are given, so you can practice and identify the vulnerable part of a survivor you want to reverse or analyze. So it's like one move mat in a uh, chess. So um, any Russian hackers here or reversers? <laughs> we can say what is the one move mat in chess, both seen on the left. You're really drunk, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the G6, but you get the chocolate. Who said it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we move the horse and get a match with one movement. So uh, the name came from a, a safe cracking competition that is based on physical reaction. But you need to generate to open the safe. It's uh, like a worldwide competition where people uh, come with uh, their own uh, safes that they build with physical reaction, but you need, I don't know, to pull some uh, gas and then it opens the safe or something like that. So let's see a safe, a survivor that we want to kill. Okay, so this is here to get outside the loop to make it uh, killed, okay? This is our purpose, so how are we going to do that? Okay, we want to, to get him outside the loop, so we want to, uh, the zero flag to be one so it will be outside the loop. So we like uh, going up and uh, like every command, we're going up and try to figure out how this command will affect the other command, okay? So we need to have AX uh, equal to one to get the zero flag equal to one. And we have like a big small X equal to one, okay? And we know that big is three, so three small X equal to one, so what is the value that is going to enter in the cell one, two, three, four to get AX uh, to get it solved? So this is the answer, okay? We need the, this is how the solution for this cracking of uh, 
the, the safe, how we crack the safe, okay? We will need to move A, 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 B, so this to get killed, okay? Here's another example. We do the same process when we uh, like uh, moving up in the commands. Okay, zero flag, now um, factorization is involved, okay? There are like uh, two numbers, but uh, we can figure out because we have the AX what is equal to, and then later, we have XO command, which we have like two parts after that command, so we can figure out what is missing, and then find out what we need to put in the cell. And uh, the same we are doing for the add command, so we can know what we need to put in the cell for uh, AL, and this is the solution for the, uh, another example of the safe, okay? So what's the safe? Usually, uh, simple survivors are measured by two important factors. In this, um, area of vulnerability and attack rate. Area of vulnerability is the size of the code that in survival that we need to hit to make it uh, not functional. And the attack rate is what, uh, uh, how many commands or instructions uh, survivor need to have to, to hit other uh, survivors, okay? So usually a survivor begins with initialization part, which is like a one time, we finish it, and then usually there's a loop uh, that is like a bombing or other things we want to do. So we need to, uh, when we attack, there are some, uh, we can cause unexpected uh, things to happen. For example, let's say we uh, attack the move AX uh, for zeros command, and we attack the uh, second and third byte with uh, killing uh, opcode uh, CC. We might change it to legal command because we did not hit it in the beginning and m make the uh, move uh, command to get killed, but we just change the address that is used later. So it's okay if the survivors later run it, just different command, okay? So looper is the s simplest uh, uh, survivor that can be, the simplest uh, functional survivor. We can test it, use it, and uh, test it with other survivors, okay? It's very cool to test it, other survivor using loop because, looper because it doesn't do nothing, don't do damage. So it's, you can see how the survivors we are writing right now is uh, working. Another uh, simple survival is called Bomber. Um, let's see it in action. Anyone can tell what is the problem with Bomber? What? No, it's okay, you can get the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Man in the middle, yeah. He killed himself, okay, it's not a very sophisticated uh, uh, survivor. Plus, he, d he began to uh, hit uh, from the beginning of the arena. Uh, we, we, I said we are sure to have uh, like a gap to the sides of the arena, so he d not need to start in the zero uh, cell, okay? So we attack with CC opcode and start to hit the arena from offset zero, and the bobby look is simple, and the, the attack seconds is three to one, so because we have like a, a three instructions in the loop and one, uh, uh, one, uh, um, byte that we erased. And the vulnerability for profile is five because the loop, if we measure the size of the loop, of the attacking loop is five, okay? So here's the canon. It's a different uh, simple survival. Let's see it in action. As you can see, there is a gap between the locations where the survivor bomb. Okay, so it's a little bit different, a little bit improvement than a uh, um, bomber. Uh, he will not hit himself because he calculates what is the gap that he needs to do not to hit himself, but he will hit in the same places always. Uh, the attack seconds is the same as a bomber, three to one, but the vulnerability profile was increased to seven because we now have more code in the, bo in the loop. So another uh, simple survivor is a, a shooter. It's a little bit slightly different than the, um, than the cannon. As you can see, there's also gaps between the places, the location very bomb, but eventually it will hit himself after uh, around uh, 30,000 rounds. Okay, so this is the drawback. So by, in this uh, survival, the attack sequence was increased to two because we are uh, bombing with a ward, which is like two cells, and the vulnerable profile was decreased to six. So it's like this game is all about give and take, a trade off, okay? How do you need to do, okay? So there's few advanced commands. I will not cover the all the advanced commands that exist in the game. Uh, there's a heavy bombing. Um, heavy bombing we can hit with a single instruction, 255 addresses in one uh, instruction. Okay, we put the data we want to write in X and DX registers, 
and we start writing from the address that is found in DS and DI. Okay? So we can decide in which direction we will uh, direct our attack. So we have only two uh, heavy bombs in uh, one battle, and it's activated by int uh, 86. This is the instruction that tells there is a special instruction. Okay? So this is in the order of a uh, attack, and let's see heavy bombing in action. You can see uh, there's a line on, on the top, which is the first uh, line of the arena, which is bomb, heavy bomb, and there's an, oh, um, in a second another heavy bomb in white. So we can control uh, the direction by the STD uh, instruction, okay? By the way, this is the dedicated uh, debugger we wrote to the, to the game, okay? That can be used to see what uh, can survive, what his instruction is going to be. There's another uh, special inst instruction called uh, smart bombing. We look for the first occurrence of the values that are found in AX and DX registers. So we replace the data that is found in the uh, register CX and BX with the data that we uh, put in the AX and DX. Okay? So we can do that uh, smart bombing to use it to like uh, hit a uh, so other survivor and make him get killed. But we can also replace the data he has with our data to make him jump to our code so we can try to uh, benefit and use its cycles for our p own purpose, okay? So we like our uh, survivor can get more power, okay? So we need to be careful when uh, smart bombing because it can eat ourselves. It's look for the first occurrence of the data. So if we, our survivor contains the same data we are looking for to bomb, we can eat ourselves. So there's only one smart bombing in the battle, and it's activated with int 87. Okay, a few protections from smart bombing. Uh, we can change the functionality of registers between versions. Okay, so people cannot count on the same uh, instructions that exist in the old version. We can also s change the independent uh, instructions. Okay, there are, we can, for example, we can put values to registers. There are a few uh, different uh, um, variations how to do that, so we can change it a little bit. We can also copy parts of the code. For example, take a code of our survival, put it in the beginning and the end before our main loop. So if somebody will attack us in a spam bomb, it will hit the fake copies of our uh, survival. If there's a variable that change near the loop, for example, uh, SP, you can uh, put it there. So every time it will be like a different value, so it will be changed in the, when somebody look for us or to spam bomb us, okay? So this is like a fair protection of a smart bombing. This is a code of a zombie by, that was released by one of the latest competition. As you can see, there are three copies of, there are two copies of the main body. The functional is uh, in uh, orange, and there are like a blue and red uh, copies. But the problem here was that there are unique values when the, um, the copies were glued together. So we can find the main uh, part and smart bomb it, okay? So this is how a code uh, looks like if we want to kill that uh, zombie, okay? We can specify what are the values we want to uh, use in the smart bombing. Um, anyone can think what is the zombie doing? What is the algorithm behind it? Okay, I already know. It's a binary search, okay? First we jump to uh, skip a fake uh, copy. The address that is moved to the as a register is a token location, okay? We want to query that zombie and give him address, and then we want that zombie to respond back to us and let us, let us know if the loading address of a zombie that is found in the X register, of his uh, register, is found before or after the address we specified. So each time we query the zombie, it gives us back uh, an answer, so then we can continue querying him in the loop and eventually uh, find the exact path where the zombie loaded, and then we can pawn him and take uh, control over it, okay? So uh, here we uh, keep the loading address, so we place between the address because the loading address is in AX, okay? We direct the direction and to save, uh, we will see it uh, soon. So right now we compare the address that was given by the, our survivor to the address of a loading address of a zombie. So if AX greater than BX, then it jump to itself, okay? So right now, there's a little bit thing weird because there is a change of uh, AL in the memory. And also, there is a, a, another a command which is load SW, which also changes uh, AX. 
So there are two commands, one after each other, that changes AX, okay? So why somebody did it? It's weird. There's a hidden DKSI command inside that instruction. So we jump to the same instruction as a GenoC, okay? So we move on by it, and there's like another command which is DKSI, and then no operation. So this is how we get response from the zombie if the address we want to query is before or after. Because if it's a greater AX is greater than BX, it will decrease the next cell after the address we queried about, it will decrease the cell with one, so the value inside the cell. So this is how you get response. If it's not greater, then it does nothing, okay? Um, this is another example of a zombie. Uh, usually, as I mentioned, there are five to six zombies. Um, here in the red uh, uh, command, we query the zombie, and in the purple command, we get back response. So there are a few uh, zombies that you can query and get response. Anyone can think what is the algorithm behind this uh, zombie? Okay, we'll let you know too. <laughs> it's the Chinese remanded theorem. So if we are uh, asking a lot of questions uh, to the zombie, for example, uh, in its basic form, the Chinese remanded theorem uh, will determine the number n that is uh, when divided by some given uh, divisors leave a given reminder. So we asked him, for example, when divided by three, it leaves a reminder two. When divided by five, it leaves a reminder three. So if we ask him a lot of questions, we get a lot of responses. When he can calculate where is the loading address of a zombie and then get control over it, okay? So sometimes the organizers send uh, invalid zombies with a bug. So they send the fix a few hours later after they send the first version, but it's usually after all the teams working on the zombies try to find what they're doing without a success, okay? And uh, optimization is also part of the game. As you remember, we have only 512 uh, bytes where we can write our zombie. So um, if our zombie is uh, our survivor, so if our uh, survivor is shorter, then it's more uh, good because it's a uh, shorter uh, vulnerability profile. It, less vulnerable. So we need to know how to write optimized code. So for example, if you look at the uh, uh, example number five, um, it, it takes uh, six bytes and three rounds, and we can change it to one byte in one round. So it's very good to write optimized code. Uh, what it reminds you from real life, reversing or hacking or security? Writing shell code, right? Because when you write shell code, you have sometimes limitations of uh, um, buffer size, for example. So you need to write very small code. So this can be pa practice for shell code writing. Okay. There's also some uh, good uh, um, resource of uh, named bit whittling hacks. It's resources on the internet with a lot of example of tricks and hacks that can be done with optimized code. You can check it out. Um, few examples of uh, anti-reversing techniques I could make, map and find. So how not to be seen. The first it, uh, is anti-disassembly trick. I found it in a blog post uh, by someone named uh, Lit Matrix. But uh, this trick allows you to hide the purpose of the functionality of the real commands. For example, here's the original code. And if you see the disassembly, uh, this disassembly was generated by the NDIS ASM tool. You can see that there is a call file instruction, but if you look at the original code, there's no call file used in the original code. So when the, uh, when the disassembler goes and uh, for the code, yeah, it's like a concatenated uh, commands, which are uh, found in similar places, in different places to one command, and then it generates the wrong output in the disassembly. So it's not bulletproof. For example, IDA, I tested it, and it's not a, a vulnerable to it, but in the original blog post, if you check out the remarks section, there are a lot of other uh, tricks or hacks of handy assembly against IDA that was mentioned by people in the remarks. So you can check it out. Okay? Um, usage of unsupported uh, uh, registers, the second technique, uh, let's take FS for example. So the thing is, there is difference between the processor and the way they, they interpret the FS registers. Okay? For, let's see how it looks in the background. Uh, here you can see the binary value of the move instruction. So we replace the SSS bits 
with the following values. So in this case, FS will be replaced with 100. But the uh, 8086 processor ignored the first bit. So instead of uh, FS, we'll get ES. OK, so in, uh, when in action, when the battle runs, it will use the ES. But when we disassemble the code, it will show FS. So it might be harder or tricky to someone who's not familiar with FS register suddenly what appears in the code, OK? So this ignores and then uses ES. Uh, there are also problems with all debuggers. For example, uh, debug exit is still uh, uh, widely spread and used in, within the participants. So one team found a, a bug in the debug exit. So if you put a small value in the SP uh, register, so it crash. So this is if we can find what debuggers are used and try to seek for uh, vulnerabilities, we can target them. And uh, that's uh, also true for every reverser and every uh, file format you, you analyze, OK? There's also random bits. We can write code and put uh, like a commands that in the sections that do not use. And then later, after compilation, we can replace those uh, bits with uh, some gibberish of commands that are irrelevant, uh, but not be used, but just to make the code uh, a little bit blurred, OK? Because if somebody is not familiar with uh, better tools that can help him, he might be stuck. OK? Um, also, we can sort the code. For example, we can separate the code to two different uh, uh, parts. And then in the uh, runtime, when the battle uh, is running, we can move the code to the shared uh, memory and then do XOR operation to like, uh, um, get the original code out of the XOR code. So it will be used in, within the game, OK? So if somebody analyzes only one part of the code, it will be harder for him to understand what is the global picture of that survivor, because he don't know he need to do like XO operation and only has one part, OK? We can also put copies of the zombies. So if somebody will try to uh, smart bomb the zombie, he will attack the fake uh, copy of the zombie. So. Uh, it will waste it on a fake a copy and not get the control of the real zombie, OK? And this is also used by every team in the, in the competition. Send different versions. So we send first a very lame version to the second round. And we keep all the goodies we have, all the, all the everything we can bring to the third, uh, third uh, version. So people not reverse the good version and able to know what our tricks are. But we still need uh, our code to be competitive because we want to get to the final. So it's like a delicate uh, play. So we want to have a good sofa, but, but not too good, OK? So this is what happened to the uh, um, team that won the first place in the second round. So from experience, it's not good to be the first uh, team in the second round because then all the other teams See, hey, you're number one. Let's go after you and smart bomb you and analyze you. So it's also not good to be the second one because the first team targets the second team. So it's good to be third <laughs> and then uh, improve uh, later. OK? So again, it's delicate. You need to like, uh, calculate what the options are. OK? So we can also try to detect the relationship between the survivors. For example, usually team uh, writes survivors based on the teams or competitors from different years. So it's like a new generation. So you can, you can understand what is the uh, survival that is based on which survivors from previous years. We can might know what the drawbacks of that survival and able to attack it, because it's like a, something historic. So um, we can uh, like uh, mark all the uh, opcodes that found within the survival. Then if we see, for example, we have like a two pairs of uh, three pairs of uh, commands, we can put it in a table uh, that uh, sums all the pairs of the opcode uh, within the survivor. So later we can put another table with the probabilities. For example, the move command was 18 times, and the move uh, call com command was only three times. So three uh, divided to 18, it's like a one uh, slash six. So this is the probability that uh, this pair will be. So later we can generate a directed graph and uh, between uh, successor opcodes and also calculate uh, like the uh, matrices, the difference between them, and get a score that will help us to uh, know similarities between the, um, between the survivors. It's like 
we can do in the malware analysis when we want to know what are the two ver variants of a malware, which family uh, they're connected to each other, okay? A little bit about genetic programming. Where a lot of uh, work was done on uh, genetic prog programming for uh, red code. Only one uh, effort was done for uh, assembly 8086 on Core Wars 8086. The source code and the work can be found in Google code. Okay. Um, this project is named uh, Darwin 8086. You can check it out. Okay. Uh, genetic programming. Um, it's like a, a part of artificial intelligence. It's a evolutionary algorithm based methodology, but uh, it's inspired by biological evolution. So you can try to generate new survivors based on other survivors and then come with the ultimate survivor. Uh, it's not uh, succeeded yet, but we're still uh, trying to figure out how to push it. Uh, so it will be like uh, in chess, like a Deep Blue that will win a survival that was written by human. Okay, this is the next challenge. Uh, we can also watch uh, uh, graphical survivors that uh, paint something instead of killing others. So for example, we can paint uh, functions like uh, 2D. We can also paint 3D and uh, paint a ball within a box. Okay, and if you're into uh, Sierpinski uh, factors or uh, triangles, you can write, you can uh, paint uh, instead of a uh, survival that attack. Okay, um, we're still waiting for the first uh, wedding proposal. So if uh, you have a gay girlfriend, but uh, will willing to suffer it, and uh, <laughs> you can uh, try it, okay? Uh, if you don't uh, like the World Cup, and she's okay, so maybe you can try this. So uh, any ideas how we can do that without hitting the survivors? Other survivors? Okay, so for example, when we do ink BX instruction, um, we like to change the memory and then we paint the pixel. But if we do XOR, BX, uh, comma zero, then we paint the pixel without uh, changing the uh, memory itself. So a, a, paint, a pixel can be painted and a survivor can paint uh, like a draw without eating other survivors. So future improvements, what can we, what can we go next? What can we do next? So we can add sound to the competition. So every survivor has its own uh, tool. Okay, it's like Jazz Festival. So there's a lot of ideas, a lot of tools I'm never familiar with. By the way, it's Jazz Festival, but I not heard a lot of jazz. <laughs> it's like 30%. I waited for the jazz, but uh, with shows, <laughs> okay, weird. <laughs> and for example, when a survivor dies, we can put a, a digger uh, sound. Dun, ta, 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 ta. Okay. Uh, we can uh, start uh, uh, online competitions around the globe, okay, international competitions. We can be part of uh, conferences as Recon and DEFCON, okay, like instead of catch, in addition to capture a flag and uh, competitions like that, because crack me is, it's you against the crack me, uh, capture the flag is usually a network or crack me, but here it's reversal against other reversers. We can might uh, write another engine for ARM, because ARM, you know, it start to be commonly used, more interesting, okay? We can do cooperation with academic institutes and the high schools, so it be a lot of research will be done by students to find the more things about the competition. We can like upload the digital free course to the kind of academy so everybody will be able to learn it. Uh, we can coach in high school. We can do different arenas, for example, arena where uh, different rules, so if you like a uh, hit a uh, a survivor and it's dead, he can be returned back to life like in Ender's Game or, uh, I don't know, Winter Arena with uh, uh, mines or something like that. You can uh, write uh, new tools that can be used by the participants. You can do different uh, competitions like League, uh, King of the Hill, uh, World Cup Special with the names of the survivors as the teams. Okay, instead of all the animals who try to guess who will win the World Cup, we can do like survivors but will come with the results. And uh, maybe we can add hardware hard hacking. I know the game will run on a board or something like that. And by the way, this is how we can add the hardware hacking to the competition. We can uh, connect the uh, teams, the developers, to electricity. And uh, if a survivor dies, we can give him pulse of voltage. Okay? It will, give like, it will have like electric feedback. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, Scrum or Agile, but. Uh, um, you will be surprised how fast uh, people are uh, programming better assembly code 
in that way. So <laughs> um, I don't, don't know how much time we have. I understand we don't have a lot of time, but uh, I'm a person that believes in TCP, so you can uh, contact me later, drop me an email, and we'll be happy to uh, contact and uh, hear your feedback because it's very important to me to come here and be able to get a lot of ideas how to take it uh, to the next uh, level. Um, I would like to thank Hugo, Sam and Elizabeth for inviting me. They are professional. It was a pleasure to work with them. It really was great. Um, by the way, Recon was an amazing experience for me. It was for the first time, I don't know, latest con ever. <laughs> and I hope I will be lucky to attend it more. Uh, I would like also to thank a few other people. And of course, my lovely wife, was, which was very brave, I stayed with my kids. And uh, every night in tango, I see what's happening and uh, how brave she is. So, and of course, thank you for all your ninjas and reversals. So, thank you.